So Luke, yeah. what would you say is your least favorite part of these older unibody MacBook Pros? Well, I'd say they're probably they're nearing the end of their support in Mac OS. There are a number of graphics issues. They've got slower processors. They're, they're definitely starting to get a little old, I would say, these days. Well, you know, for me, my only complaint is that there is no space gray option. Let's oh. paint. Oh, no. So we've got a bit of an ambitious, um, I don't, actually, I don't know if ambitious is the right word. <laughs> Dumb? Yes. Yeah. Pointless? Yes. Yeah. P possibly poorly thought out? <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> so for today's video, we are going to try to solve the most important problem with these older unibody MacBook Pros. The fact that they're not space gray. I can't get work done because it's not space gray. Oh, absolutely. I think that's a huge design flaw. And honestly, Steve Jobs, major misstep. Major misstep, I think. You know, you should, you should let him know in person. I should, yeah. <laughs> so what we're gonna do today is, I mean, quite simply, we're gonna paint it gray but we're gonna make it a lot more complicated for no reason. Because here's the thing, when we're talking about painting an entire laptop a different color, there's a lot of things that we don't want to paint. Number one, the screen. That's, I think that's a given, you yeah. wouldn't wanna paint that. The keys, probably don't wanna paint those. So here's how we're gonna go about this. We are going to strip this computer down Ooh, to the absolute, <laughs> with the exception of the display glass because that's glued in and I don't want to mess with that we're just going to tape over the display but everything else we're going to unscrew absolutely everything until it looks something like this this is the top case of a MacBook Pro that has had absolutely everything taken out of it the keyboard power button I even took out the battery indicator LED so this thing is pretty much stripped down to the bare bones and it's gonna make it a lot easier for us to paint this and paint it well, because we don't have to worry about painting things that we don't wanna paint. Actually, nah, screw it, let's just get started. I was gonna say like, this is a 2009 MacBook Pro, it's got a Core 2 Duo and a four gigs of RAM. It's got an SSD, it doesn't really matter, let's paint it. Well, you just said that, so just put that in. Okay, that's a good idea. All right, so we're gonna start by just tearing this computer down. Now, I would recommend if you wanna follow along at home, First of all, I don't know if you should follow along at home because I don't know how this is going to go and it's potentially <laughs> going to be very disastrous. Honestly, these old unibodies are so straightforward to take apart, especially the 13s. They're so easy. What happens a lot of the times with these computers is you'll notice the um, they get really hard to take the logic board out. And what happens is because these things have such bad cooling, the heat sink melts onto the backlight cover and it gets stuck together, which is comforting. That's great design. Yeah, it's really good. In fact, I think that's what's happened here. You hear that unsticking? Ugh. And there we go. And just like that, super easily, with no trouble at all, we have the board pulled out. It does need a little bit of a cleaning, but we're ready to move forward with the deconstruction. I've got a... I've got an electrostatic bag. And then just like that, we have separated the two main parts of the MacBook Pro. <laughs> Let's spray paint the bezels. It'll be like the MacBook Air. <laughs> oh, Hold no. it I'm pulling out the DVD drive and I'm not putting it back. We're bringing this thing to the modern era. Space gray, no DVD drive. That's the future. Where are the scissors? I mean, this part, we're, we're gonna cut out a lot of this. <laughs> Come on in nice and close. I wanna show you something. I wanna give you a little secret, okay? We've got all the major components taken out now. And if you're following along on iFixit, this is probably how far you're gonna get. We've taken out the battery, the drive, the board, and the CD drive, but we need to go a lot further if we're gonna get this thing ready for spray paint. So the first thing that we have to do is take out the mid wall. It screws into the chassis and it just allows things to mount to it, but we, we need to get rid of it because we have to remove the keyboard. Now that's gonna be the most annoying part of this entire disassembly. It's gonna take a very long time to do, but not to worry about it because we're gonna do the other stuff first. So next we gotta remove the 
LED indicator. This is like the little button that you press that tells you how much battery you have left. Whoop, the button came out. That's the masking. I need an exacto knife. Oh yeah. Unless you want a racing screen. Okay, so this is the hard drive connector. Is that also the IR sensor? Uh, yeah, it is actually. So this unit contains the SATA connector, but it also has the sleep indicator and the IR receiver, and it's all on this fun little noodle. Rosie, not, lots of little screws here. Not a good place. Ooh, that, that came out easily. Trackpad is done. The only thing left at this point Okay, Oh, oh. that was unexpected. Hey, so at this point, the only thing left to take out is the keyboard. Now it's quite hard to, <laughs> to take out the keyboard without pretty much destroying the backlight. So there's a pretty decent chance that we're gonna destroy the backlight, but I wanna keep using the original keyboard because I want this to be as cheap as possible. This plastic here actually contains the LEDs. They're like right here in the middle. And then underneath it is the fiber optic where it kind of goes to all the keys. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, it looks like we might actually be able to salvage this. This is pretty, it's pretty gross. And I'm actually kind of surprised this is normally, this normally like gets torn to shreds by now. That was kind of satisfying. Not gonna lie, that was really satisfying. Now comes the really fun part of taking off 50 to 75 tiny, tiny screws that hold this keyboard on. Oh, there's a lot of crud. Oh, I missed a screw. I always miss one screw. Up you go. And there you have it. Let's see how gross is it on this side. Um, it's not terrible. Just the unibody chassis of the MacBook Pro. This, I don't think it's gonna be too much of a challenge to paint because we don't have to mask anything. We just have to paint it. Apple logo is masked off. The glass is masked off. Let's paint. It's whatever. <laughs> oh, got it. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna, <laughs> we're doing some tests. Wait, wait this is some, the phone number. Oh yeah, let's just. Okay, there you go. <laughs> oh. You can still see it. Yeah. Take whatever you want. Ah! Oh, no! <laughs> oh my god, look at it go, it's dripping. Wait, it all good. No runs. No, no drips, drips. No, no errors. errors. This, is this is a lie. Well then, how do you explain this? <laughs> okay. Jake, I thought we worked on your anger issue. <laughs> Prop it up on a Hot Pockets box that I found in the recycling. Sponsored this is my hot pockets. Their food. Do it. Okay. Are we ready? It's a lot of calories. Yeah. <laughs> this is less of a tutorial and more of a don't do this at <laughs> yeah. this point. Okay, let's do it. Right. Oh my god, it's so speckled. <laughs> oh. oh no, it looks dirty. It's, it's the is... space gray leopard print. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. <laughs> Get out of the way. <laughs> This is how they do it in Apple when they make them. Yeah, do that middle part. There you go. All right, got it clear. Okay, you know It's what? honestly kind of an interesting look. It's certainly not space gray, but it's from, a, from very far away. <laughs> make sure that we don't get any, if anything gets on that, any like little That's, nature crumbs. Oh, you're right, nature, <laughs> nature crumbs. All right, here we go. Nice and even. Try. About a foot away. Like this? Yeah. That's not even at all. I, I'm gonna fix <laughs> I it. I know. This looks horrible. This looks so bad. <laughs> It'll, I'll just put a thicker layer on, don't worry. <laughs> It'll dry, and then we'll <laughs> put, put a thicker layer on. Jake, I don't like that face that you're making. It's not filling me with hope and joy. It'll even out. I think it's a really cool look. Yeah, that actually looks really good. I'm, I'm actually impressed. That came out well. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what is this? Wait, wait, wait. Do I really want to do this? You want it? Oh, oh no. <laughs> Come on, you can save it. There's nothing to save. Just do a light coat, do a light coat. Yeah, what do you think I'm Get doing? Get this corner here. Obviously. All right, wait, wait, okay. All right, and walk away. Walk away, let's let it set. 
another it'll need another coat, coat, but I think if we let it dry a little bit, it'll be better. So with the painting done, we let everything dry and I painstakingly reassembled the entire MacBook Pro. I'll be honest, I was a little bit skeptical about how it would look when it's all put back together. And well, here it is. So, the custom painted Space Gray MacBook Pro. All right, so what are the takeaways from this experiment? Well, number one, it was a ton of fun. We had an absolute laugh taking this thing apart and painting it. And it was a little bit nerve wracking because we only really had one shot. And also this entire project was ridiculously cheap. So the spray paint cost, I think it was $4, maybe $5. And then the only other thing that I bought were some rubber feet on the bottom because I took off the old ones and I wanted to put some fresh ones on here. So this entire modification cost a grand total of $8. So it's definitely an inexpensive project, but the question is, is it worth doing? Because let's be honest, it's not a great use of time, arguably. So if you have one of these unibody MacBooks that you use every day, I would say probably don't do this. But if you have a spare or an old one just sitting around, honestly, it was a ton of fun. And it came out better than I thought. Now, don't get me wrong, there are a couple of rough patches. It was very hard to paint the inside lip of the display. There are some spots of bother. And one thing that you gotta keep in mind, because we're spray painting this thing, it can chip and nick and peel pretty easily. So if you were taking this computer around every day, it would probably look pretty terrible pretty quickly. I picked a color that was similar to Space Gray and it's not far off from Space Gray, but because it's a different surface, it's a different texture, it doesn't have quite the same effect. So if I were to do this project again, which I might, depending on how this video goes, we'll see. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a different color on a different MacBook. But one thing that I think would look really cool would be to paint it black, possibly matte black. That could look quite interesting. To my eye, this color kind of looks like Nardo Gray, like you would get on an Audi RS3 or an RS7 or something like that. It kind of reminds me of that color and finish. So I don't really know what to make of this, to be honest. Let me know in the comments below. Does this look cool? Would it have looked cooler in a different color if we weren't trying to emulate Space Gray? What do you think about this project? And if you do try it, Hit me up on Twitter at Luke Miani and show me what your computer looks like. So that's gonna do it for this video. As usual, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know down below what you think. Don't forget to join my subreddit. That's also linked in the description below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.